Without further ado, it is my greatest honor and pleasure to welcome for the first time to the DOT studio, Canon's national executive marketing genius, Mr. Larry Thorpe. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Larry. Pleasure. We really appreciate you coming Pleasure. out here and sharing some time with us. Oh, I love booster chairs. <laughs> <coughs> I, I actually do too. <laughs> so, uh, our interview will be peppered now and again with, with questions coming in from the internet. But um, just, just to get started, Larry, some, some of, your, of your biographers have, have described you as the, the inventor of high definition. So is that accurate? No. No? NHK was the inventor of high definition. NHK? Yeah. That's a, is that a Japanese organization? That's the Japanese Broadcasting Organization. Okay, and so and why have they confused you with the inventor of, of... Oh, I think I've been involved with HD from right. the, since it came to the United States. When uh, did it come to the United States? It came, was first shown in 1981, and in 1982 I joined Sony and was immediately immersed in high definition at that time, All right. both on the market development and standardization. Okay. And I grew white. <laughs> on that effort. So when you say standardization, <laughs> uh, when we talk about high definition, I'm, I'm used to basically two standards. You know, we've got the 1080s, we've got the 720s. That's all your design? No, I was part of a committee of about okay. a thousand people all right. hammering out those standards over 1080. 15 years. Fantastic. Long and so um, now, you're, now you're doing some work for Canon. What was your specific role on the C300? I was uh, part of a working group that was formed about three years ago when we decided that the time had come, that the technologies at Canon had matured to a level where we could make a very serious motion imaging camera. And um, that working group had a lot of young people who spent a lot of time in Hollywood interviewing DPs, directors, visiting the studios. I didn't do an awful lot of that, but I was back at the ranch at headquarters, and we had many, many meetings. Sure. And we finally hammered out a spec we handed that spec to our colleagues in Japan and we challenged them to build us this camera. And they did. Are you and pleased? Oh, thrilled. All right. This, this is the first time um, a camera specified entirely by the marketing company in the United States was built by the factory. Normally they don't do that, okay. but they did here. Fantastic. So um, I, I made some allusions to, to this, the sensor on this camera. Tell me, this is actually a, a 4K sensor. Yes. Tell me, tell, me the, the, tell me the impact of that. What does it mean to be a 4K sensor? Well, it's a 4K in terms of its total pixel count. It's 4,206. Horizontally, it's 2,340 vertically. Okay. That's a lot of pixels. And inside that, you could have a perfect 4096 by 2160, which is a, a 4K standard. Okay. Or you can have a 3840 by 2160, which is another 4K standard. There are two now, 4K now standards. Now, I definitely followed all of that. Yeah. But for the benefit of our <laughs> friends at home, I think you brought a couple of diagrams for us. Verge, can we bring yeah. up the, um, the first diagram regarding 4K sensors? Right. So, so break I, this down I for draw me. your attention to the top left. That shows you that the, uh, the active pixels is 3,840 across and 2160 vertically. Now, if you break, that's called the bare pattern. This is a classic bare pattern color filter array on this single sensor. The sensor, by the way, is a super 35 millimeter size, 24.6 by 13.8 millimeters. If you break that bare pattern apart, as I, did, I do there, uh, you will see that the red has 1920 by 1080 pixels. The blue has the same, and these are the sampling structures of the HD standard for 1080 line. The green, however, is 1920 horizontally, but twice as many vertically, 2160. What we decided to do with this was, okay, we got a 4K sensor, but we're not gonna make a 4K camera. We're gonna make an HD camera. We're gonna make a terrific HD camera. So instead of de-bearing to get the color components, we have a very novel readout, a parallel readout system where we suck out the blue directly, 1920 by 1080, the red directly, 1920 by 1080, and then we break out the green as two 1920s by 1080. So coming out of the sensor are four wires, 444 or G1, G2, B. Then we add the two Gs, and that's the magic of the sensor. These two Gs, when added together, we extend the dynamic range, 
we extend the bit depth, we extend the sensitivity, but most important, because they're offset by a half a pixel horizontally and vertically, we eliminate aliasing, and we're able to elevate the green resolution with no aliasing. So you sort of have, um, with the greens, almost like uh, out of phase? Yeah, one, because of the half pixel offset, the, there's a phase reversal in the sidebands that cause aliasing. Okay. They just cancel each other. And now you have reduction. perfectly clean, well, it's not noise, it's aliasing. Aliasing. The, the, the jaggies reduction. that you get when you, you hit a detail in, in the scene. So that, of course, because uh, lumens is, Luma is made up of 70% green, that beautiful clean green transfers directly to the Luma. So that's responsible for the, the low light Egg. Well, no, it's responsible for the very high resolution. We, we start with 444 green, All red, right. green, blue. No debearing artifacts, no aliasing in the green, so we have an extremely clean 444 high definition, equal components. Then we process them in the traditional way, all the gamma correction and color correction, everything. Then we finally matrix to 422 uh, to record on, on the card. So you've got a 4K sensor yeah. in the camera. Right. You've spoken to Hollywood for three years. Some of my friends would ask, why don't we have a 4K recorder yet? Because, um, as you know, we, we, we come in in 2011 with our first motion imaging camera. There's a lot of other manufacturers that have been out there for a half a dozen years. We decided, step one, and this is step one of a master plan that we have for the, quite the foreseeable future, um, we're going to hit the ground running by diving into a marketplace that's thriving worldwide, and that's high definition. There is 3K, 4K, 5K out there, but it's not a big business yet. It's coming, and we're watching it like a hawk, but at the moment, we want to plunge in with a terrific high definition camera that can do great television programming, great television commercial programming, and do pretty serious movie making.